you guys welcome hi welcome to this text posted webinar today we're going to be talking about how surveys can showcase success to your donors your volunteers and your clients so this is going to be a great topic i'm so excited about our partners here from question pro and if this is your first time here at TechSoup, i'm going to show you how you can engage actually i'm going to tell you because i can't show you Many of you have already turned on the closed caption. If you need the closed caption, just type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. This is being recorded, so we're going to send the slides and the video to you by tomorrow. And if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A, but I think our speaker will be able to grab it from the chat room as we're um, moving along. Vivit, you can get ready to go ahead and start sharing your screen, and I'll just keep going. Again, thank you for those of you who already let us know where you're Zooming in from. This will be recorded, as I said, and sent out to you by tomorrow. I'm excited about this topic, and I'm going to get ready to turn it over to the founder of Question Pro here with us today. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Rita. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. Um, really quickly, uh, um, you know, I wanted to kind of share a story. Um, you know, TechSoup and Question Pro, we've been partners. I was telling the story, Rita. Also, we've been partners uh, for almost eight years now. Um, I think I met Gail, who's one of the executive directors at TechSoup uh, back in 2016, 2015, 16, I think, in San Francisco. Uh, we hit it off. And then since then, um, I think Question Pro has been giving um, our platform through the tech group, uh, through the tech group environment, uh, to the entire, obviously to the entire tech group community. Um, a little bit about myself, and then I'll, I'll love to kind of get Robin onto the conversation. Also, uh, today, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm the founder here at Question Pro. Uh, my background in software and technology, uh, and you know, obviously, we're a tech company. We're a software company that allows people to create surveys, deploy surveys, and analyze surveys. Uh, Robin, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. Uh, tell I'm us working. a little bit about yourself. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Searchlighter. Okay. Um, well, Searchlighter was set up in 2010. Um, uh, we are, are operating primarily in a European market. Um, our uh, brief in a sentence is really to ensure the social dimension of uh, the implementation of education programs so that we are ensuring you know, a, a relative equality uh, of access and, uh, and, and ensuring, uh, especially, you know, with respect to, to uh, minorities um, and, and, and women in particular. Um, and uh, we work in a program uh, which is mostly funded by the European Union called Erasmus Plus. Um, and it uh, involves really uh, partners coming together, maybe six or seven partners with uh, uh, different uh, experiences uh, collaborating together and uh, uh, on a, with a, 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 a set task um, where that is uh, not solvable by any one partner. Um, it needs uh, partners to come together um, and uh, collaborate and uh, we play our part in, in that. Um, and uh, a lot of the work that we do, I do, uh, is uh, on uh, both I I on evaluation, both um, within the project um, and on the project uh, results as well. Um, and I'll come on to that a little bit yeah. more on, in the case study. Um, yeah, that's uh, more awesome. or less what Search Lighter is. Any further that's questions? Great. Please, please no, no, me. we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll keep it uh, fairly easy and kind of you know fluid, uh, if you will. A uh, little bit about uh, so uh, hopefully uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll keep it fluid and I'll keep asking um, um, Robin a few questions as we go along. A uh, little, little kind of background about Question Pro itself. I started it back in 2005 in Seattle. Then I moved down to San Francisco in 2010. I've been running it for almost 15 years, 20, you know, 18 years now. Um, fairly, fairly decent sized company. Right now we have about 300 employees. We're fairly global. Uh, and we, like I said, like I mean, the context of this is really like you know we've always felt that you know we need to kind of figure out a way to give back to the nonprofit community. And this was when I met Gail. She was running. She was the executive director at TechSoup. Uh, she and I hit it off, uh, and then uh, we, you know, obviously we give out, you know, Question Pro. A lot of you guys have used Question Pro, and obviously Robin, Robin's used Question Pro, so we give it out as part of the TechSoup program. It's free. Um, we don't really charge anything for uh, for uh, for access to our platform. 
Um, we already talked a little bit about search. I, I, I want to talk, take a little bit and talk about surveys and why it matters to nonprofits. Uh, uh, even more so, obviously, I come from a commercial environment. I'm not a nonprofit guy. I run a software company. Uh, but I think, you know, for me to show progress is pretty easy. I have a financial, I have a board. I have to show financial results. I have to say, like, look, we made, you know, X dollars yesterday. We made Y dollars tomorrow um, and so on. So, uh, in the in the commercial context, I think it's actually pretty easy for people to show progress. But in in a, in a mission driven context, which is I'm pretty sure all of you guys are, um, I've I've racked my head quite a bit around it. It's like it's pretty difficult to show progress uh, in my mind, at least. Like it's not it's not as easy as saying, hey, you know, our profit margins went up by twenty five percent. Okay, cool. You know, I get a pat in the back. Everybody's happy, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But as you know, obviously, nonprofits and mission driven organizations are not. Uh, you know, they can't. You know, they don't have a profit margin. They don't have a revenue multi. You know, you know, all these all these metrics are not there. So I think that's why surveys are kind of pretty easy way um, to show to show kind of the empirical to at least you know empirically show progress realistically. Um, and then I, I want to talk a little bit about, and then I'll hand, hand it over to uh, Robin, in terms of what different, you know, what I've seen over the years, what are the different contexts under which um, service can be used, um, understanding the context of donors and what, what is their preference, what is, and, and actually giving them, giving them, you know, donors are looking for some sort of, you know, tangible evidence of how their um, obviously how their dollars are working. So, you know, I think, um, so that's a, that's a pretty kind of important element of how, um, how surveys can help, you know, you know, the donors themselves want to see like, okay, look, we gave you some money. What happened? Um, that's a, that's an important element. Um, the other thing that also I've, you know, I've talked, obviously we have about 800 to 1,000 nonprofits um, using our platform and they, they use surveys to kind of like, you know, really get the feedback from volunteers. A lot of, um, as we all know, a lot of a uh, lot of nonprofits run um, on the basis of volunteers, um, obviously because of you know economic constraints, uh, and people love it. I mean, at least in the states, a lot of people, you know, a lot of nonprofits are run, you know, through the through the notion of volunteers, um, and the volunteers, you know, have their own aspirations, needs, wants, and and so on. And so you know, collecting feedback uh, about the volunteer from the volunteers uh, as to what what's working for them, what's not working for them, uh, surveys can be a pretty easy way to kind of understand what's going on collectively from from your volunteer kind of constituent group and then obviously the people you're serving really you know every um, you know every nonprofit is serving some 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 target demographic constituent group um, and understanding you know what's working for them uh, what's not working for them they all can are intermingled together so in terms of how um, how we run uh, so that's kind of at least my perspective um, so I have a deep kind of like belief that you know I, this is my kind of kind of ESG way of like, you know, we built, we built a pretty amazing piece of software and we want to, we want to share it with uh, the entire nonprofit community. Um, we are not in it for making a dollar. I can tell you this right now. <laughs> you know, it's just not, it's not a bait and switch. It's not, you know, it is what it is. Now we, we give the software for free. You can do almost anything you want or that our commercial um, commercial teams can do. So so that's kind of at least my perspective on on this. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to um, to Robin. I, I really want you guys to kind of like, you know, see what you know, Robin and I obviously have talked. Um, Robin's done an amazing job in terms of measuring and evaluating programs. Um, I'd love to, um, you know, Robin, uh, take it over from here, man. Okay. Thank you very much, Vivek. And yeah. I, uh, I certainly... Okay. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Share the screen now. Hopefully that will happen. So there we go. Hopefully you can see the uh, see the screen. Um, nope. um, this, so uh, yeah, this is a, a, a brief case study um, that uh, is uh, based around a standard form of um, survey that we've put together that is uh, firmly based on internal evaluation. Um, one of the issues that we come up with when uh, we are doing projects that have uh, six or seven partners from different European countries um, who've never met one another um, is that we have we all come together with different experiences, um, which is a strength of the project. But when you're working together, that potentially is a, a weakness as well, uh, because uh, you uh, have to work together as a team and you have to find ways to um, and ensure the uh, working methods um, are, are, are done that way. And obviously that uh, depends to a certain extent on the work of the coordinator. 
Um, but um, also I try to assist the coordinator in, in that through um, setting up um, internal evaluation surveys, um, which um, mean that uh, people can see the important issues to think about um, when working together um, as, a, as a team. And I, I come up with uh, four uh, headings um, that uh, I, I, I look at. The first is coordination. Um, and um, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, the second one is um, partnership support, um, which looks at how individual members are willing to support one another when there are issues or questions or difficulties or snafus that come up. Um, you know, are we ready to actually step in um, and be there for one another in order to progress the project? Um, the third one we look at is partner development, where each partner reflects on themselves and say, what have, how much have I grown in my um, sector um, that, so that, that uh, we, we can be more effective for our clients and our customers in the long term? And the fourth one, we, we evaluate uh, meetings um, and how effective the meetings have been, be they online or, or in person. And every project has both online and um uh, in-person meetings that that uh, we do. Um, however, I'm just going to concentrate um, for the moment on, um, this is just a headline from a, a project that we did called Steaming Ahead. And what we're gonna look at is the second partner evaluation survey that we did um, in that um, project. Now, I know it's a little bit small, but I'm hoping you can, if you look at the screen you can, closely, you can uh, read the text. Um, this is the, the other slides, the text is a little bit bigger. Um, but this is just, uh, as I said, emphasizing coordination. Then we explain what coordination means so that the partners are ab absolutely clear um, what we are addressing. Um, and we have uh, three subheadings within coordination, management, communications and resources. So we spend just one slide to kind of explain our terms so that there is no um, uh, poor interpretation or misinterpretation of what is meant when, uh, when we are referring to, uh, to these particular terms. Um, then um, the first question we come up with is to please identify the area coordination from uh, the list. Um, and we have a pull down menu um, here um, that covers, you know, whether they choose whether we have been best in uh, management um, or uh, communications or resources. Um, and then you have a box here where we, you can explain um, a, an example of um, very good practice that, that we have done. We think it's important that we identify an area that we should reinforce. Um, because to a certain extent, when we are evaluating, we're being open to being critical, but um, it's also uh, about patting ourselves on the back um, where we've done really well. Um, and it's about making sure that good practice that has emerged during the project is reinforced and is acknowledged um, by, by each of us as being something that uh, where we're succeeding. Then um, the uh, next slide is um, the, uh, the, uh, a reflection on the comments that were made in the previous survey. And so we highlight these. So in, from the first survey, the, the following projects, uh, the following, sorry, statements were made. Um, and then we are given the opportunity to reflect on them and say, um, okay, how has things developed over the last six months? So we have identified three areas that needed to be improved. This is where the, the partners um, identified. And so I'll just read out, you know, one or two of these. It, it was not always clear in the early months as to why the payments and the kickoff meeting had been delayed. We can create a better way of communicating between partners. For beginners, we need extra information sometimes. So these are just three kind of criticisms that will come up. So we go, okay, we must try to improve this over the next six months. And then this survey is to ask the question, did we improve in, in these three areas? But the survey, the previous survey in survey one also came up with some ideas for improvement. 
So the first one was a monthly online meetings could be held to keep close track of the development of the projects in all areas. And this was identified three times. So that reinforces that this was a common view that we need to have uh, online meetings more frequently if we're going to progress. Um, in order not to bother the project team with loads of questions, we may have an FAQ annex. So this is a good idea that has come up from one of the partners so that we can create a, uh, an annex on the uh, internal site that can, uh, where people can uh, re refer. Uh, and then lastly, uh, future goals for embedding the improvement, and that is to collaborate and share experiences as this will in, improve uh, performance. Then uh, the uh, kind of overall comment is, so the first one is, please state any additional perspectives on the points made by partners concerning coordination. Um, in the same space, uh, participants are encouraged to include any further elements of coordination quality that were not raised previously but could have developed the quality of the project operation further during the project lifetime. And thirdly, participants should feel free to state their overall view as to the quality of coordination as it covers management and administration. So this is a kind of final comment box where people can draw criticisms that identify whether we've improved from the first survey and um, whether the uh, ideas um, are still relevant um, for uh, improving. Um, and whether the uh, there are whether the future goals um, have uh, been uh, met. Um, Robin, I have a quick Robin, I have a quick comment here. I really like the idea that you guys are doing like showing what you got out of the previous survey onto the next wave. Really, yeah. right? So it's, it brings about some level of continuity. Absolutely. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious how uh, how often are the waves? What's the kind of the cadence or the frequency? So is it monthly, weekly, quarterly? Every, every no, the, the surveys the surveys are, are are done. There are usually during the lifetime of a project, they will be done mm -hmm. three times. So the first survey mm -hmm. will be done after about eight eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, about about seven or eight months, and mm -hmm. then the second survey will be done um, sh about fourteen about about well no just over a year into the project um okay. it would be maybe month 14 of a project yep. and usually yep. the projects last two years okay and then the very final survey will be a review of the you know the whole project as a whole and, yeah. and that will be done in in the final weeks of the project right. You know, I so really like that. It will yeah. be about every nine months or so. Every something. Nine months, yeah. No, I really like the idea that you are kind of showcasing what you kind of learned from the previous survey on the yeah. next one, and then kind of explaining, okay, this is what we learned, and this is that. It's 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 hugely important, um, in terms of like you know you know you know so called closing the loop, really, right? Letting 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 the letting the respondents know that like we heard you, and this is what we found, and then you know that that creates a a different level of engagement. Uh, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and this uh, this is just an example of the kind of graphs that are supplied by Question Pro software when we're doing the analysis. It mm -hmm. comes back with a holistic uh, look at what all the uh, respondents had a look, had a say. So it, it shows quite an even spread in terms of where people feel that the project is performing well. Um, a third um, identified management, a quarter identified communication. And just over 41% identified resources as the area of coordination um, that they thought was um, most uh, effective. Um, and these are just, um, this is some of the um, analysis that we came up with from um, the, um, the uh, sorry, the boxes where people yeah, can fill the in. Open what I've yep. just shown you is the, um, the questionnaire itself and this is the responses um, that they gave in the second survey, because the quotes I gave were from the first survey. So this is the second survey. And um, the, the, this uh, is, shows your know, project results are being designed and are of high quality. Um, the uh, involvement of partners in ensuring the quality of outputs is significant. Um, the second one is rather long one. I'll go skip down. Ease of access, ease of use, and uh, range according to need. 
thanks to this project, I had the opportunity to deal with innovative educational activities. So it's a kind of higher level of uh, positivity, I, th I think, um, in, in, in this um, set of responses. But, you know, it allows them to kind of look at how the project has been improving since the first survey. Um, the work to be done in the ongoing uh, circle of the project was quite prominent and extensive. Yeah, uh, Robin, I think I think one of the oh, I, I want to jump in a little bit over here. Mm. Uh, Robin, one of Please. one of the smart things you, you did was that you kind of wanted to identify like different areas, and then you asked an open ended question of yeah. why. So that gives you a little richer information than the statistical. So you have the statistical information that says, oh, yeah, I mean communications are good. You know, maybe yeah. we can improve in communications, but coordination and this and that. But then you have a richer kind of. Uh, a more richer context around why did you choose what you chose really right and that really? gives you kind of a depth of information um, yeah i mean we, we we think i mean in terms of quantitative and qualitative information we at least seek a balance but if we're going to give a priority in, in any direction it's the qualitative rather than yep. the quantitative um, yep. Yep. the quantitative gives you directional guidance but qualitative gives you rich deep data um, exactly that, so yeah, yeah, we can advocate that even even for our listeners, really, like, you know, if you're thinking about building a survey, you know, think about asking the question why and keeping it open ended because you don't know what you're going to get. Right. I mean, you you have a set of closed ended questions. Hey, choose between these things is going well, this is going bad. And then ask a simple why question. Why did you choose? Even if it's going well, why did you choose it's going well? And that just reinforces um, reinforces your belief and you get a lot of information through that process. So this was the, these are responses to the question, please identify at least one example or incident that illustrates or justify your choice. So these are inevitably going to be positive, but it's a, a chance the, of, um, you know, to uh, to see, you know, where where it identifies areas where we're doing well and we need to kind of reinforce and to a certain extent um pat ourselves on the back it it, it, it can be a bit uh, constructive criticism is all very well but if it all sounds critical then um that can kind of um break team spirit as much as build it um so you know in order to build the key team spirit it's important to discuss areas where we we um can honestly say we we we're, we're uh, doing well um so i won't go into too much of these but um this is um, the following comments from the last survey, um, either identified areas of coordination where we can improve. And uh, so these are new comments that uh, came up. Um, so areas uh, to where to make improvement. It was not always clear in the early months as to why the payments and uh, has been delayed. We can create a better way of communicating between partners. Um, and for the beginners, we need extra information sometimes. And I wanted to emphasize that a little bit. So I put it in red for the, because this is the presentation which I make for all the partners, because I coordinate the process, I coordinate the evaluation, and, and I put together the slides, which then becomes a resource both for the coordinator, but also for all the partners. And this one highlighted in red was one for the coordinator, um, so that the coordinator could be especially aware we that we need to be um, uh, aware of the uh, organizations that uh, do not have previous experience in their program. Um, and they may be um, so slightly intimidated by the partners who have a lot of experience in the program. And um, we, we need to ensure that they are fully informed um, because when you, when you have done four or five projects, um, there are many things that you know simply from the experience, but if you, when you have no experience, um, the partners who are experienced sometimes can forget what it's like to be inexperienced. And uh, so that is something that uh, we need to remind ourselves uh, about so that the uh, beginner partners don't get uh, left behind. Um, ideas for delivering improvement um, and uh, future goals for embedding improvement. Um, and then state any of your reflections or thoughts. And so these are, this is the open, open-ended question, really. It's so that, you know, really, what do you think, you know, what do we need to kind of um, think about, you know, over the next uh, uh, six months? And, um, okay, I'll just read the one at the bottom. We've created really detailed resources and guides which are strengthening 
the sides, but we have to cooperate a lot more than before as we are in the third work package, which is based on implementing plans. And we have to improve this. We have to gather as the three implementing schools. We are not totally aware of the other schools so that we can compare and contrast our operations and our results specific to the implementation. So this is uh, about the pilot uh, uh, study that, that we were doing, where there was one school who was saying, you know, they have, have a lot of awareness of what is going on in their own school with the pilot study. Um, but uh, the uh, pooling that information at the end is not enough. If they're going to make a pilot study successful, they need uh, to have more interaction with the other schools as they are gathering the data um, on, the, um, on, on, on the pilot. Um, sorry, I'm speaking very specifically about uh, this particular project. Um, but I thought it was very uh, important um, that uh, there was a kind of emphasis on uh, communication, because when you uh, have seven partners from seven different countries um, working um, in, in their in their own in their own way, um, it is uh, uh, it can become quite isolating in some ways. And so this survey is a useful way to kind of. Uh, uh, reinforce, you know, that um, uh, people, you know, feel this need to maintain communication and not to be uh, too isolated uh, in uh, silos. So I won't go into too much detail. These are kind of similar things. Um, our communication was obscure and distracted in the first few weeks of the project. This has changed completely in recent times. So this shows a radical improvement that took place because of the comments that were made in the first survey. Um, we made those survey comments in the first survey and we took notice um, and improved during the second uh, part of the uh, project. And one partner has clearly identified uh, that there. So, you know, this is very much about our project, so I won't go into too much, but this is, um, the graphic information, which um, from the other areas that I identified, if you remember, I said that there were four areas, coordination. This is the second one, partnerships support. And so the idea was um, to, this was split into three sections, responsiveness, awareness, and inclusivity. Um, and uh, people could vastly uh, identified inclusivity, um, that they felt included in the, um, structure of the project so that they felt uh, they had they were able to uh, give their perspective on how to implement the pilot study um, and uh, that, that this kind of uh, uh, meant that there had not been mu too much isolation in the uh, decision uh, making process so that is positive uh, data that we can have the third one was uh, partner development so this is how each individual partner is developing. Um, have they developed a knowledge about the project subject areas? Have they um, created opportunities within the partner for uh, employees and volunteers to um, develop? And has there been a lot of learning between the partners um, um, ab about the specialist skills that each partner has that um, other partners could usefully uh, learn? Um, and on balance, 50% thought that the area we had uh, done what best in was where partners were learning from one another. Um, so this is a very uh, positive uh, thing to, uh, to take and, and also learning about the project, the subject areas of the project um, as, uh, as a whole. Um, and the, um, the last one was in uh, the implementation of the meetings. Um, and people felt that when they were in the meetings, um, when we had the discussions, um, partners were very supportive of one another over the issues that were being raised. So often what at our meetings, um, partners uh, talk a great, great deal about uh, the problems that they had implementing the project during the previous six months. Um, and uh, the, the, there was a strong feeling uh, amongst the partners that we were very good at supporting one another um, in uh, addressing uh, those uh, those problems. Um, so to, uh, sorry, to summarize, um, if I can, um, 
the uh, sorry, uh, click back a slide. Um, the first point was the aims and um, objectives that we have when we create the, the surveys. Um, it is to bring together uh, disparate de departments in a single collective exercise to improve the implementation process. The second uh, aim of, uh, was to apply a range of perspectives in order to gain a broader overall view that has taken each participant into account. And the third one is to allow those who are far from the day-to-day -day project decision-making to sense their influence in those decisions. And then um, for project impact, how this actually improves the outcome. And to a certain extent, this is very much for the donors so that the donors can see how we have reflected on our work um, in order to make sure that the results are of high quality as, as possible. Um, what, we what we have actually created by doing this survey, we believe is a framework for identifying improvements that can be made so that they are tangible and measurable. We also feel that we have created an agenda for discussion that can be ongoing at any stage of the project development according to its milestones. And thirdly, we feel these surveys create a heightened collective spirit and a trust in the management process through an acceptance of self-effacing constructive criticism. Um, and uh, that's that's from Searchlighter. So thank you very much for letting me present. That that's team. awesome. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about like how this kind of impacts donors? Have you guys done presentation to donors with the survey results and says this is the process that we run? Can you kind of it's not, not a direct presentation, but what we the, these these um, the these this slide presentation? What I've just shown you is just a few of the slides that we create right. for each survey. We create a slide presentation, which is about 40 to 45 slides mm -hmm. uh, that are similar to what I've just shown you there. Um, okay. And there are about 40 to 45 slides for each evaluation. So that is about, a, you know, over a project as a whole, there are three evaluations. So that's maybe 130 slides so that they can, but it, it allows them to read the, um, the progress you know, so mm. that they can see the kind of things that we were raising in, in um, uh, survey one and uh, where we end up by survey three um, and how the process has developed the, um, the, the project uh, implementation process. Um, so that it's, not a, it's not direct in the sense that we have a webinar like this, but we, we, we have to uh, show evidence of the work that we've done in the final report. And in the final right. report, they have the um, the PDFs of, of these slide presentations that they have a look at. And because they have to evaluate, they have to evaluate the evaluation process, if you see what I mean. And then right. that goes into uh, their final evaluation uh, report uh, as to whether we have been effective in, in, in implementing evaluation. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an interesting kind of angle in terms of like, you know, letting, letting the donors and stakeholders know that you're actually measuring these elements and then letting them know like this is the outcome. I mean, even the fact that you're measuring the elements itself is a, is probably a pretty positive kind of factor and, and reaction to this. Um, and therefore, like, you know, very really likely the donors are going to be, you know, hopefully happy that you're measuring and evaluating as uh, the process itself um, as you're going along. Good, good, good. Uh, I've been answering some of the questions um, uh, as they have come along. Um, I think I've answered most of them. Um, and as uh, Allison has a question, can you speak to the evaluating aggregating answers, especially to open-ended questions? So um, Allison is asking, Robin, how, how did you kind of kind of evaluate and aggregate uh, or look at all the kind of textual responses that you got? Um, can you help me understand that? Yes, I mean, basically what I, I try to do is I go through each one and uh, I make a judgment call over where um, the same point has been raised um, mm -hmm. in, in a very similar way. And um, I, you know, will take uh, the, the, the response that is the best summation of the views of other partners 
Um, and then I will kind of maybe annotate that a little bit, you know, with, you know, so that uh, everybody's viewpoint is included. But mm. I, there, there's not much point in a presentation of simply re um, repeating the same sentence, right. you know, time and time again. Um, and then, right. as I said, I think you see in there, you know, I, I, I emphasize in, in brackets, I put the same point was made three times by three right. different brands. Um, and that obviously has a, a strong emphasis that, well, this is just a real uniform view and a uniform perspective. Um, right. And, you know, so, you know, each time, if there is a uh, the same uh, point is made by different partners, then I will identify when it's being made, you know, more than once. Right, right. Um, uh, just to just so that everybody else in the in the in the webinar knows this, uh, like if, if it's a small group, then you can do this. But we also have tools in the platform that allow you to kind of categorize categorize topics through the platform itself to kind of say, hey, this is this tag, this is this tag, and then you can do an analysis of the tags themselves. Um, I mean, obviously, it depends upon the context and the size and the scope, right? If you have you know you know twenty twenty responses versus twenty thousand responses, obviously twenty thousand responses will be a Slightly more challenging and depends upon the context, right? I mean, you're doing a member survey. I think one of the one of the one of the one of the gentlemen was asking about member surveys. Well, if you have twenty thousand members, obviously it's not physically humanly possible to go to twenty thousand responses. Um, we have tools in play to kind of you know categorize them. Yes, you know you know we have some tools in play to automatically categorize content based on some something, but it, it, the, the the sample size has to be obviously uh, much much larger uh, to to. Uh, yeah, just for context, that. I mean our you know the project partners in our case it's it's yeah. usually the responses are about ten or yeah. uh, ten or twelve. It, it is yeah. so it, they're really small. Yeah, 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 yeah. It depends on the context. Of the of the size of the size of the size of the context also, good. Uh, I don't think there are any other questions, Rita, uh, either on the chat or on the, the on the Q and A. Uh, and I think Someone Vanessa has. Vanessa? Uh, oh, we won't just pop it. Just question for sharing insights with customers about what question wording gets the most responses. Oftentimes, response rates are low. Uh, I mean, I mean, I get asked this question quite a bit in terms of response rates, as well as kind of the, you know, uh, we are not in a position, like, like I said, like the context varies, you know, somebody is doing a survey with, you know, we have surveys that run with, you know, millions of people, not even hundreds of thousands, millions of responses. And we have surveys that run with 10, 10 20 responses, uh, realistically. Um, so in terms of question wording, um, you know, I think the general kind of the general guidance we can give is, you know, you know, be clear, um, as Robin said earlier on, like what the definition of each of these matter, because everybody has a different, slightly different version of the definition. So if you can, um, uh, in the survey itself, we generally recommend like make it clear as to what you're asking, how, you know, keep it simple and make it clear. <laughs> Clarity and simplicity are the key, two key most important elements in a survey is like, what are you, what kind of question are you asking? Asking and it's clear and it's simple. Um, anything that gets more complicated and it's ambiguous, then you get, then you run the risk of, you know, ambiguous responses. Realistically, right? If you say like, look, you know, if, uh, you know, you know, the definition. So I really liked what Robin did. He kind of explained what the definition of each of each of the components were in in his survey. So when I, if I'm taking the survey, so I understand what the definition is. Um, so in terms of what question wording, uh, like I said, my my simplest answer I can say is that, and Robin, you can go after this. Um, is you know, Clarity and simplicity. You know, if, if you can stick to uh, stick to as simple as you can and be as clear as you can. Uh, and questionnaire wording is actually an art and a science by itself. Um, that's what researchers do for a living in terms of what kind of you know how to make it unbiased and so on and so forth. Rob, Robin, do you have any kind of guidance and suggestions on uh, you know the questionnaire wording itself? No, I, I mean obviously simplicity is um, is the key. It, it depends on. I mean, when I'm talking about the survey that I did, um, luckily, I had uh, quite a high uh, buy-in, if you like, because we I was working with partners who had a, an internal commitment um, to bettering the project. Um, so, you know, when um, I think for, for me, the most important thing was to make sure that the partners knew the purpose of the project. You know, that they knew that it wasn't just a box ticking exercise for the funder. You know, that this was really about trying to improve the processes of the um, 
I mean, I did, uh, I mean, for, for each one, as for, when you introduce a, a survey, um, there is a kind of covering sheet in Question Pro. You have a cover, kind of covering uh, sheet that you kind of um, put in uh, what the survey is about, why it's there, why it's taking place. Um, and, you know, well, but I, I tend not to try to explain the survey too much in that. I do that in the face-to-face -face meetings. And um, when they hear it face to face uh, from me um, as to, you know, why it's important, I, I, I tend to get quite high buy in from people. So people take their time to do these surveys. You know, I've had people who do these surveys who take up to 40, 45 minutes to do one single survey. Now, from uh, when you're doing, you know, surveys with uh, clients, you know, that ha may have several thousand um you know, you, the, these surveys must be much, 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 much simpler than that. Um, so I know for sure that I'm doing something that's quite um, bespoke. But, uh, you know, I wanted to show it to you because I think what I what the survey that that we do on, on for the eval internal evaluation, it's a little bit different um, and it may be less usual um, to, to as an application of uh, Question Pro. So I wanted to make sure that you, you were aware of the range of uh, things uh, that, that Question Pro can be used for. Awesome. Good. I think we've answered most of the questions now. Um, awesome. We got, you know, 45 minutes. That's good. Good timing. We got everybody 20 minutes back. <laughs> so, Aretha, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Robert, I think you did a great job of answering how success can be in Vivid. What a pleasure to have you here. Um, there was so many questions that you answered already, so we didn't even have a chance to go through them. So thank you both for being here. This is being recorded. It will be sent to you by tomorrow. And speaking of surveys, please take a moment to complete the survey when you close out this, this window on Zoom. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.